So today I'm here with my Williams Multi-Game Cabinet, and this is one of my favorite cabinets. Uh, it has a J-Rock FPGA board, and it allows you to run multiple games like Joust, Robotron, Defender, Stargate. Uh, it's a really cool machine, and my favorite game, of course, is Robotron, and there's you know a lot to be said about why Robotron is such a great game, um, but one of the details I noticed when setting it up is in the menus, you can customize the text that appears on the title screen. I thought that was a really cool feature, um, something I hadn't hadn't seen before, um, especially back in the day when arcade operators, you know, might want to promote an event or something, or you know, just just have exposure with their name on the screen. So I thought that was pretty cool, and it kind of got me thinking, like, it would be neat if the rest of the machines in here um, did the same thing. Uh, but most games didn't do that. Um, in fact, I think the only ones I know of are these Williams games like uh, Joust and Stargate and Robotron. So uh, that got me thinking, like, maybe I could do this on my own machines. And I recently built a few emulators for some arcade uh, games, uh, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, and Ms. Pac-Man. And in doing that, I kind of got familiar with how those 8-bit CPUs worked and kind of how the memory was laid out and how they kind of worked. And, you know, I was looking around there and I said, well, there's just some text strings and memory, maybe we can modify those, you know, what, what can I do to get this to show up on my, my real arcade machine? So this video is just going to walk through how to do that. Um, it's going to start with uh, getting the ROMs, um, trying to identify what you can change, testing your changes in MAME, and then burning that back to the ROM chip so you can run it in your, in your game on your physical hardware. Uh, the video itself is going to be a little bit technical, and uh, if you're not interested in the details on how to do that, uh, you can skip to the end and you can see the results. And I'll also have a link to my website where I have a, a page set up where you can customize some of these ROMs and um, I can just ship them out to you with your own customizations on them. Uh, but that, with that being said, let's get started. Okay, first thing you're gonna wanna do is get a copy of MAME on your system and the set of ROMs that you wanna modify. In this case, I have split set ROMs, so I have Pac-Man and also the parent Puckman set. Uh, but if you're using merged ROMs, you might only have one zip file. Um, we're just going to unzip that. And you can see here there are six ROMs for Pac-Man. And before you go any further, you just want to make sure that you can actually run. Verify that your ROM set is correct. And here, uh, MAME launched and the game runs. All right, so here we're on the title screen. I'm just gonna pause it here. So the objective here is to find something that we can modify on the screen. And the, the most obvious thing here is this long uh, copyright message at the bottom. There's a lot of characters there, um, a lot of room. Um, also, you can modify the ghost names, but I think the, the best place to put something like Justin's Arcade would probably be right here on this string of text down here. So I'm just going to leave this up so we can remember what that string is. And we're going to go into the directory with all the ROMs. So if you're on a Unix-like system, there's a command called strings that you can type. And you can give it a file name. And it will attempt to look through that binary and find things that look like ASCII strings, um, basically things that are human readable. And uh, in this case, eh, there's really not anything in here. Um, what we're trying to find is the word midway or you know anything that appears on the screen over here, like the, the names of the ghosts, credit, high score. Um, but this one doesn't look like there was anything in that one file. Now what you could do at this point is run that command against all of these files here. Um, it wouldn't take very long since there's only six. But if you have a bigger ROM set, uh, you might want to do this in a more automated fashion. So in that case, we're just going to write a quick, quick shell script that will loop over each file and print the file name. And then run the strings command against that file. And now when we run that, if you go to the very top here, you can see Here's the file name, and then here's the, all of the strings that it found. So we're just gonna kind of scroll down here and look through anything that looks like uh, human readable. Mostly looks like junk so far. All right. 
And once we get down to this last one here, we're starting to see some stuff we can read. Character, nickname, which corresponds here. Character, nickname. Um, and then we see coin, credit, free play, bonus, uh, table. Yeah, we see a bunch of stuff, so that's good. Uh, and then here's midway. So this is probably the one we want right here. One of these two. Looks like there's two of them. So I'm just going to scroll up here and see what file that was. It was Pac-Man 6J. So at this point, you need a hex editing tool. Um, there's all kinds of free ones out there. Um, in my case, I'm just going to use a VS Code, uh, the code editing IDE, but um, you can use anything. I like to use this hex editor extension by Microsoft. And we're just going to go ahead and open 6J and with the hex editor. All right, so on the left, we have all of the binary represented in hexadecimal format. And on the right, we have the text that was decoded from that, uh, basically the ASCII text. I'm going to see a lot of garbage in here, uh, but I'm just going to click over here, hit Command F, and make sure this is set to text, and we're going to search for midway. All right, so looks like we found those two hits that we saw earlier. So you can see here, as I click around, uh, both sides highlight. Um, each one of these is a byte, and that byte represents this letter M here. So you can see 4D is M, 49 is I. And basically where those come from is the ASCII uh, specification. Um, you can see here M, 4D. So that's, that's where those are coming from. Um, but basically, if we want to modify this, um, you could just click over here and start typing letters. Um, but it, you'll notice if you look at the M here, like 1980 at M, but really what we have is 1980 space M. So the uh, decoded text 40 is an ampersand, but really the game renders it as a space. So there's going to be a little bit of mapping. You'll have to figure out which characters are different. Um, but for the time being, we're just going to make a small edit just to see what happens and verify that we can actually do the edit that we're expecting. Um, one thing that's curious is that we have two different locations for midway up here. Um, I'm just going to modify one character here. We're going to switch that one to A, and then we're going to change this other midway to B. Um, I'm going to hit Command S here to save it, and then we're going to restart and see if our change took effect. And you'll notice when we launch the game this time, MAME throws an error that the checksums on 6J are wrong. And that's to be expected. We, we made some changes there, and it's telling you, hey, that, that ROM might be not be right. But you know, since we modified it, we're expecting that. So we're going to boot the game over here. And speed it up. And there we go. So you can see here that um, B is the one that's on the title screen. And now I'm kind of curious to see where the other one is. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and insert a coin. And we'll see, here's the one with A. So Pac-Man actually uses two different text strings. Um, and that basically gives you the ability to customize each one of those. So the next question is, OK, well, I could probably figure out how to change this to Justin's Arcade. Um, it looks like maybe the start of the string is here. And maybe the end is here, just based on kind of guessing. The at is a space, uh, MFG, and then percent. Byte 25 is probably the period. And then CO, and then another percent is probably the period. And then probably forward slash is the end, just because it looks like most of these other strings end in forward slash too. So let's just go over here and try to change this. I'm just going to fill in the rest of that with spaces. So if I didn't mess anything up, we should have Justin's Arcade on the title screen. Go ahead and save that. Restart MAME. Justin's Arcade. Looks like 
I missed the uh, copyright symbol in the front, but you know, the space is all worked out. Let's go back over here and take a look. Okay, so I was wrong here. The byte 5C, which looks like a backslash, is actually the copyright symbol. So we could put a space there. And, you know, let's just center this a little bit if we can. Restart one more time. Ah, oh, that looks better. Right about in the middle of the screen there. So we can easily kind of figure out some basic things uh, like the spaces, but what if we want to figure out more advanced things like what are all this, the, the available characters we can use? Well, MAME has a nice little utility. If you hit F4, is the sprite and palette viewer. And we're looking at palettes now. I'm going to hit enter and go over the tiles and use left and right. So this lets you cycle through the tiles in different palettes. But basically what we're looking at here um, is all of the tiles the, the game has. And you can see zero through nine, here's all the letters. Um, looks like there's an exclamation mark. There's the copyright symbol we, we saw earlier. So if we hover over, for example, A, up in the top, like right here, you will see that it says hash 41 or pound 41. And that 41 is the hexadecimal representation of uh, that tile in memory. So if we go over here and highlight an A, you can say, yeah, yeah, there's byte 41. So there is the map where you could look, look up each of these characters. But since they happen to, to correspond to their ASCII equivalents, um, we don't need to look those ones up. But the exclamation mark we might want to use, and if we look at that, it's 5B. So if we want an exclamation mark over here, we can type 5B here. And you'll notice um, it's a left bracket when decoded in text, um, but that's fine. Um, we're actually going off the tile here, so we want 5B. So I'll hit save. Launch it again. And there's the exclamation mark. All right, so we got the title screen changed. Um, if I insert a coin, we still want to change this text probably to match. So I'm going to close this and then make the same edit here. Save that. There we go. Title screen and the insert coin screen are both modified. Okay, so it looks like it's time to try to get this onto some real hardware. So we know we modified one file, Pac-Man 6J, um, but, but what is that? So each one of these is a ROM chip on the, the Pac-Man board itself. So we need to go find Pac-Man 6J ROM on that board, find out what kind of ROM chip it is, and then burn that on the ROM chip. All right, so here's the board from the cabinet. And if you look across the tops and sides, you'll see letters and numbers. And this is basically just a coordinate system. So we're gonna go down to J and then over to six and find the intersection of those two. And you can see on the silk screen, it says J6. So this is the chip we need to remove. And I have a separate video on this, but basically you just need a flat blade screwdriver and a little patience to pull it out of there. And at the bottom, you can see the numbers. So we need a 2532 compatible EP-ROM chip. You'll also need a programmer. And if you do a Google search, you'll probably come across this one. And this one's great for modern ROM chips, but not good for old ones. Older chips need something that can program higher voltages, like 20 volts. So you'll probably want to go with a GQ 4x4. This one works pretty well. And now I'm going to pop in a blank 2532 chip. We've identified the ROM chip we need to burn. 
I'm gonna use the Windows software that came with the GQ 4x4. The first thing we need to do is pick the type of chip. And this is the HM462532. And then first thing I'm gonna do is verify that it's blank. And it is blank, sweet. Now I'm gonna go pick the ROM file we modified earlier. And uh, I've already browsed to it here, Pac-Man 6J. Okay. And then we're gonna write. Cool, good to go. Now we can reinstall the chip back on the board and make sure our customization works. And I'm gonna test this out on the workbench before I put the whole board back in the cabinet, just in case there's a problem. All right, the game booted up, and yep, you can see our customization here at the bottom of the screen, right on. So I hope that gives you a quick rundown on how to do your own ROM personalization. It's worth noting that you're not limited to changing the title screen, and with a little more work you can change any text in the game, like the ghost names on the attract screen, for example. Other games will be harder to personalize, you may have to bypass ROM checksums for the game to boot, and some games may not have easily identifiable ASCII strings. ROM disassemblies are a big help in these cases. But like I said earlier, if you'd rather not do the dirty work yourself, you can head over to my website and personalize your game using my easy web tool. Once you've got it set up how you want, I can then ship you an EPROM chip for you to install on your own board. And if you're interested in that, just look for a link to my website in the video description. But that's all I have for today. I'm just going to leave you with some videos from some personalizations I've done on some of my other machines. Thanks for watching Justin's Arcade. I'll see you next time.